What's up guys, so I just got back from NAB in Las Vegas. Now, if you're not familiar with what NAB is, and I've done videos of NAB conventions in the past, it's a show where they showcase camera equipment, camera accessories, lighting, basically anything that has to do with filmmaking. I also got to meet other YouTubers and filmmakers there, which I love because I always like to learn from them. So for example, I got to meet, you know, Peter McKinnon, I got to meet Maddie from Travel Fields, Devin Supertramp, uh, my boy YC Imaging. There's just a whole bunch of other people that you just get to collaborate, talk about stuff, and just kind of learn a lot. And this is a show that I really enjoy going to every year. Uh, there's another one coming up soon in New York, I believe in October, so if you're like in the East Coast, you should definitely check it out. But anyway, I reached out to you guys and asked you what type of questions you have for me in regards to NAB and what I saw. So. You guys responded and I wanna answer those questions. So let's go ahead and start off and I apologize if I'm saying your name incorrectly. So the first question is from Sedant Pandey and he's asking, what's your experience with Blackmagic's new Pocket Cinema Camera 4K? So I got to play around with it and it seems like a very solid camera. Now one thing you have to take in consideration and it's a little bit deceiving is whenever you go to these shows, they have these makeshift sets which look amazing, they're perfectly arted, they have great lighting and typically whatever camera's on display, they usually pair it with this very expensive like an Airy Master Prime lens which typically wow. runs like 40, 80 thousand dollars depending on which lens it is and they're giving you basically a perfect case scenario. So whatever you look at is gonna look amazing. Uh, on paper, this camera basically beats anything at that given price point. And that's why it's generating a lot of buzz. Now, if you're not familiar with this camera, it basically comes in shy under $1,300. So in terms of price point, like for a cinema camera, it's amazing. It shoots uh, raw, which is something you never see at this price point. It's able to shoot 60 frames per second at 4K. You have mini XLR, full size HDMI. You also get a big display, five inch display to look at all of your stuff. One thing I do like about it is that you're able to record to an external hard drive using USB Type-C. So if you have one of those like, let's say for example, those little Samsung hard drives that have Type-C or Type-C capable, you can literally plug this into the camera, hit record and record all of your stuff to this hard drive and as soon as you're done, you can literally plug this into your computer and start editing right away. Now, another thing that they're doing is they're actually giving you DaVinci Resolve for free, the studio version, which costs $300. So effectively you're paying $1,000 for this camera, which is pretty amazing. Now, it's not all lollipops and rainbows. Blackmagic has been known to have quality control issues, terrible battery life on some of their cameras, and even when it comes to like delivery dates and their promises. And that's something that you guys can read on the forum. So just keep that in mind when looking into a camera like this. You just don't look at the price point, you look at the track record of a company. And that's the thing, at the price point that they're selling at $1,300, granted they're giving you the software for free, they are still making money and that's the retail price. You have to think about it, they are also selling it to companies like B&H Photo, Amazon who are distributors and typically they have 30 to 40% profit margin. So inside of those components, you know, you have to think about the quality of components that they're using. I'm not saying that they're terrible or anything like that. All I'm saying is that obviously the sensor and all of that, which they've had issues with in the past, they have to cut corners somewhere. A lot of people were hoping to at least get something like a Super 35. Obviously full frame would be a dream. Um, you're getting a micro four third sensor. Some, somebody like me, uh, I'm not a fan of Micro Four Thirds. I will still buy the camera because the price is fairly inexpensive and I think it's gonna appeal to a lot of people, but where the cinema world is going and where you see manufacturers heading, it's a full frame sensor. Most of these cinema cameras, you see stuff from Canon, you see stuff from Sony, they're all headed to full frame. So on paper it looks solid, but until I use it real world, which I do plan to pick one up, uh, we'll have to see and if Blackmagic for whatever reason you're looking at this video or watching this and you want to send one out for me to try out I'll be more than happy to do so Anyway moving along to the next question at chronic 1290 is asking thoughts on the Sony a7 III So I should be getting mine hopefully next week and I will be doing a video on it And it's just like I said with the Blackmagic pocket cinema camera until I play with it and I use it in the real world, I can't tell you because when you're over there at NAB, everything just looks great. I mean, it's perfectly lit and they're just gonna give you a great environment. 
Uh, obviously, it looks like an, a solid camera. It looks like a great upgrade from like an A6300 or you know some of the older Sony models or even the current generation. I mean, it has a lot of great features, and I think for you know YouTubers or you know filmmakers or even wedding guys who are shooting in low light, I think it's going to be a solid camera. But again, until I use it. I can tell you my full opinion. Obviously, it's a full frame camera compared to like the Black Magic. It is slightly more, it doesn't shoot raw. Um, you know, it's just, I think right now we are at a very cool spot if you're getting into filmmaking or even if you're becoming a YouTuber or anybody using a camera because cameras are becoming more inexpensive and they're just packing more features into it. So as a consumer, I think that we're winning and hopefully one day we can shoot AK for $1,000, possibly. This next question is from Mario Charles and he's asking, what's the most impressive camera you saw at NAB? So I actually didn't even get footage of this, but there's this company in Japan or from Japan I believe it's called, or they're NHK, I'm not sure. If I find an article of them, I'll leave it linked down below. But basically they brought an 8K camera that shoots at a high frame rate. I believe it was 280 frames per second. To me, that is very impressive. And the fact that the camera itself, I mean, it was in a box or it's kind of like a box shaped shell, wasn't really that massive or big. I mean, I think that's very impressive for camera technology. So I'm gonna have to give it to them. That was the most impressive camera tech that I saw at NAB this year. Vineeth Sudhi is asking, will you be giving Resolve 15 a try? So I'm deeply invested in Adobe Premiere and I've dabbled into Resolve and you know, it's, I feel okay using it. I'm not as comfortable as I am with Adobe Premiere. The thing about me in general, and I'm just speaking for myself, I just know my way around Premiere enough where I can color grade and I'm gonna be 100% happy with it. Not that I don't think Resolve is great. I think Resolve in terms of like efficiency from a computer is much better than Adobe Premiere and I would love to learn it more. I may play around with it, yes. I just feel more comfortable using Adobe Premiere so I'm not sure I'm gonna be using it for any of my professional work. Maybe I'll play around with it with some of my own personal projects or even YouTube videos but I don't know, we'll see. This so next question from Jason Latier. Any cool camera robots that caught your eye? Also favorite single piece of equipment you saw at the show and anything you might add to your setup? So there was a bunch of robots this year. It reminded me of two years ago when we saw a bunch of drones. We didn't see much drones this year, robots everywhere. So there was one that caught my attention and it's from DJI, mainly because the size and form factor was much smaller to the other, you know, bigger robots. Actually, MKBHD, which some of you may be subscribed to him, uh, he did a video on one from Kira. I will actually leave that link down below. It's a really good video regarding robots that, you know, you can do motorized movements for your camera. Uh, the one from DJI was smaller and I would assume probably much more inexpensive compared to what's out there. Uh, it's priced at $500,000. I know that may seem high, but when you're dealing with you know, these higher production or even music videos, uh, it could be worth it to own one of these. Obviously, I don't see YouTubers going out and buying one. I mean, if you have the money for all means, more power to you. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's the one that interested me the most. Favorite single piece of equipment you saw at the show? For me, there was a lot of accessories for the C200 that interest me. Obviously, I own that camera. Uh, there was one from Zayun. I'm not sure if this is a new, a gimbal for them, but this one supports the C200, which is impressive because the C200, it's not a light camera like something from Sony, like an A7S, so the fact that you can use this gimbal, and I think they told me it was like 16 hours of use, which is crazy, uh, seemed impressive. One thing also that I like is that you can connect a USB cable to it, and it has a follow focus, so that you can use it for whenever you're using manual focus. You use this follow focus ring, and it's all built into the camera, or Canon cameras. You can't really do it with Sony, or I don't think you can do it with other cameras. I believe that's a Canon feature only with the USB. So that was really cool, and that interested me the most. Uh, hopefully I can add that to the studio, but anything you might add to your setup. Obviously all these little trinkets for the C200, uh, hopefully that Zion, a gimbal and also a lighting. Lighting is something that I plan to improve here at the studio and also for the commercial work that I'm doing. Uh, Aperture has some amazing lighting. Uh, they just announced, not out yet, but coming soon, hopefully. It's kind of like an airy sky panel, RGB. A lot of cool stuff from Aperture. I'll be picking some stuff from them very soon and hopefully I'll be doing some videos 
on this channel if you guys are interested. So yeah, it was a lot of fun. NAB is something, like I said, I really enjoy just because I love cameras, I love accessories, and you know, this is stuff that helps me in my channel, and this is stuff that I just geek out on. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And if you guys follow me on Instagram stories, or just Instagram in general, you guys get to see behind the scenes. So I will leave all of that link down below. Um, thanks for watching guys, and you guys will see me in the next one. Adios.